Hello, I'm Steve Tassi, the Board Game Guru, and I'm here to give you a spoiler-free tutorial on how to play the upcoming legacy-style game from Horrible Games, King's Dilemma. First thing we're going to talk about are the components that you get in the box. I will be discussing the legacy components a little bit, but don't worry, I'm not going to spoil their content at all. So what do you get in the box? Well, you get a rule book, obviously, a hefty rule book coming in at uh, almost 50 pages long. It has uh, some world flavor. It has a game overview. It talks about setup. It talks about the different houses. It talks about how you do votes, how the dilemma cards work, everything you need. It talks about the resource market and how it fluctuates and gets affected. And it has end game scoring and uh, how you know uh, when a game is over, how you know if you won, what's your reward if you win, as well as uh, it talks about how the whole campaign uh, comes to an end. Uh, and uh, the game will take you about probably 15 or so plays to get from the beginning to the end of the full campaign. Uh, and you won't know, this is an interesting thing, you won't know until the final game just exactly how you tell uh, which player has won the campaign. So that's the rule book. It comes with a map, double-sided. The map on one side shows uh, the kingdom of Ankis, that's the fictional world where the game takes place, uh, and all its neighboring kingdoms. And then on the reverse, it shows uh, the kingdom of Ankist in greater detail. Uh, that'll become uh, handy as a reference for a lot of the cards that talk about different places. Uh, there are 12 different player screens, each one for a different house in the game. Uh, that screen has a place where they can put their name, they can track their uh, progress as they win or lose games, they'll earn prestige or crave. Uh, it has a place to indicate how frequently they've played different um, objective cards, and when they've maxed out each one, they're going to be awarded either Prestige or Crave. And it's got spots to mark off different achievements that they may uh, do over the course of a game or several games. And uh, once all the boxes for a particular achievement are filled in, well then, they get that thing. Uh, we get uh, the legacy content. This comes in the form of envelopes full of cards. There are 75 different envelopes, starting with double zero, ending with 74, and they will get opened in different orders depending on how things play out. Uh, some of them won't even get opened. Uh, it's a legacy game after all. There are also uh, legacy stickers. Uh, this booklet of stickers has 177 different stickers on it that will get affixed to the board. There are uh, rectangular spots on the board that are where the stickers go. Then there are the mystery stickers. There are 12 of them, uh, and the campaign ends as soon as six of them have been used. So you never know which six it's going to be, and you don't know exactly how the end of the game is going to play out uh, until you know what all six of the mystery stickers are going to be. That's it for the legacy content of the game. Uh, the other components that you get are all the board, uh, some cards, and uh, all the tokens that you're going to need. So first off, let's talk about this little guy. This tile is the maze tile. This sits on top of the deck of dilemma cards so that nobody can see what's coming in the dilemma deck. Each player is going to get a set of three of these voting cards that are going to sit in front of their player screen for everyone to see. There are six different secret objective cards in the game, and uh, they get used every time you play the game. Uh, they will give you different goals that you are trying to achieve. They all relate to uh, what I'll be calling the resource market. This is a sliding scale where the five different resources of the kingdom uh, fluctuate as different dilemmas arise and solutions are voted on. Uh, 
Uh, in addition to wanting to have the sliders for the resource market in certain positions, each of your objective cards will tell you how many victory points you are awarded at the end of the game if you have more uh, leftover unspent money than anyone else. You'll get there's a first place award, second place, and third place, and they're different for each of the different objective cards. First place is always the best, but uh, the player who gets it may not get as many points as someone else might have, depending on which objectives are in play. Next up, we've got the player resource tokens. Uh, there are power tokens, which are these shields. The small ones are worth one point. The big ones are worth three points. And then we have money, which are these coins. Again, big ones are three, little ones are one. There are the resource tokens for the different uh, in-game resources. They have a white positive side, they have a black negative side, um, and there are also these momentum tokens. Again, they come in with a black and a white side on them. There is a scale token, which moves up and down uh, the scale track next to the resource market uh, as things occur. There are two tokens for the leader and the moderator. These will change hands frequently over the course of a game. Uh, then there are the consequence tokens. Uh, these come in the same flavors as the resources, plus there's also the sticker, positive sticker, negative sticker tokens. Uh, the consequence tokens are used as a, uh, a visual reminder to players what the outcome of a vote will be. Uh, more on that in the rules section, but there are tokens to just let people know at a glance what's going to happen if we vote yes or no to any particular situation. Uh, and then we have the board itself. And the board is divided into a variety of areas. Uh, we have the resource market. Uh, it goes from 1 up to 17. We have the scale. Uh, the scale token starts in the middle. All of the resource tokens start in the middle. And as the game progresses, resources will go up or down, and the scale will uh, move accordingly. We have the voting area. This is where you put the consequence tokens for everyone to see uh, what the outcomes will be, as well as the pool of power that will be divided up amongst people at the end of the vote. Uh, here we have the sticker area. There are uh, spots for three stickers of each of the different resource types in the game. Uh, and then we have card slots down at the bottom for story cards. You will see that they have different symbols on them. Uh, so when a story card comes up, you'll see what symbol is on it, and once the card's been read out loud, it gets placed uh, on the appropriate spot. And then there are spaces for the dilemmas. And the last space, you'll notice, has room for multiple cards, and it has the skull. And we'll get to that in a bit. The last thing that you get in the game uh, are the uh, what are called open agenda tokens. There are positive ones for the different resources and there are negative ones for the different resources. Uh, there is a fairly useful insert inside the box. Might as well take a look at that. The insert contains spots for all the envelopes, spots to put tokens, spots to put the cards that you use, uh, a little spot for the booklet of uh, stickers. Uh, there is a slot for dead cards, so once uh, a story card is told to, that it's gone, it can go in there. Uh, there is this empty spot, which is where you put all your um, unused dilemma cards. So if a game ends and there are still cards in the dilemma deck, that deck will get slotted in here, and that's what you start with for the next game that you play. There may or may not be content underneath that insert. Uh, anyone who's familiar with legacy games knows that sometimes there's something special. I'm not going to tell you if there is or not. Okay.
Well, that is what you get in your copy of The King's Dilemma. And that's it for my component look at The King's Dilemma. Next video will be setup and how to play. Thanks for watching.